Hi there, I'm Patrick, a.k.a. Papa Echo. And I'm Ryan, a.k.a. The Stashinator. I'd like to elect that alias governor. Haha, <laughs> that's impossible. Even so, special thanks to Toybox TV viewer Harrison Pelequin for my special moniker this week. So Patrick, who is your daddy and what does he do? Mm, let's see, I, I can't seem to remember. Uh, maybe you have a tumor. Eh, uh, either way, we need to work on your memory. That's it! You're a genius, Ryan. And it's not a tumor. Um, thank you? Today we'll talk about how to manage your memory meter when building in the toy box. You may have noticed the color stripe on the right side of your screen. Well, it's not just there to look pretty. That's your memory meter, and it's there to let you know when your toy box is getting full. What fills up your memory meter, you may ask? Well, any toys you place take up memory, but those with complex features and behaviors like enemies, townspeople and cast members, vehicles and mounts, collectibles, and destructible decorations take up more. Set pieces and boss battle toys are awesome, but you have to use them wisely since they also take up a lot of space. If your memory meter is maxed out, it can affect your level. For example, you will see warning messages where your enemies and townspeople might not spawn in. Which is kinda awkward, like when your ride doesn't show up. Get to the chopper! So what are some things you can do to build an awesome level while keeping your memory meter under control? Well, first of all, think about what console you're using. Older consoles are less powerful and will have less memory available than newer consoles. If you're building on a newer console, you'll have more memory to build with, but keep in mind that players using older consoles might experience problems playing your level. It's also a good idea to plan your level in gameplay phases. If the first phase of your gameplay has a lot of enemies to battle, you can require the player to defeat them all, or you can have logic set up to their enemy generator to remove any remaining when the phase is done. Otherwise, you could have lots of enemies wandering around your level and taking up memory when the player's not even battling them. That's lame. The same technique applies to townspeople and cast members with their friend generators. If a townsperson or cast member gives you a mission and you don't need to interact with them ever again, you can set the logic to remove them. Then, as your toy box progresses to the next phase of gameplay, you can start fresh. And here's another tip. Having a generator spawn a bunch of the same friend or enemy type takes up less memory than having it spawn several different types. Replayers are also your friend. If you have a set piece, destructible decoration, or even a logic toy that takes up a lot of memory, think about recording it on a replayer. Then when you're done with it, you can set the replayer to clear, saving you that extra memory. And keep in mind that replayers will also remember logic connections that are made while they're recording. And that's awesome, but even with all of these techniques, sometimes your level will just just be too epic to contain all the amazing things you have in mind. Well, when that's the case, you can always break your level into two or more separate toy boxes that are connected with toy box doors. You can check out our full tutorial on toy box doors in the tips and tricks playlist. Wow, thanks to all these ideas, I think I finally have my memory back. Which reminds me, my house has been on fire this entire time. I should probably go back and do something about that. I'll be back. Okay, that's it for this time. Leave any questions, as well as any ideas for my alias, in the comments below. Also, be sure to check out our other tips and tricks videos for more great ideas. Hasta la vista, baby.